There we are, boys. All our stockings are hung on the mantelpiece, ready to be filled with lots of lovely Christmas presents. <sighs> well, it won't be long until we can open them in the morning. I'm pooped. I know what you mean. I always get tired after eating figgy pudding. No, I just took a massive shit. What's figgy pudding? It doesn't matter. Come on, into bed with both of you. Why do we all sleep in one big bed? Look, if it was good enough for Morecambe and Wise, it's good enough for us. Uh, that doesn't explain the fireplace in the bedroom. Will you just shut up and go to sleep? Alright. Good night. Night. Did anyone else hear that? Shh. Guys, shut up, Andy. It interrupted me and Scott Johansson before the breast reduction. Who's poking me? It's, um, it's Andy. But I'm on the other side of the bed. Um, still Andy. Guys. That's right, it's a burglar. What? Get him! No way! You don't! What the fuck? Well, you said get him. Where do you get a shotgun? Little Warwick Davis. He gave it to me as shiny insurance. Ah. Uh. So, who does this fat swat think he is breaking into our house on Christmas Eve in his red suit? Ah. Uh. Oh, guys. Hey, mate, dickhead, look at me silly hat. I'm a dappy-looking burgling bastard. Andy, you should probably take the hat off. And look at this. He's even brought a bag for all the stuff he's going to own. Yeah. What? Well, Andy, I just shot and killed a jolly fat man with a white beard and a red suit who snuck down our chimney... Christmas Eve. The Krampus? No, not the Krampus. Well, in that case, it's either a clever disguise, or... Fuck. Fuck indeed. What? Well, now what are we gonna do? Burn him. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm not that evil. It's Christmas. Let's throw him in a ditch and let the dog walker find him in the morning. Merry Christmas, fucking Ian. Well, we could always... Nah, forget it. What? Well, I suppose one of us could put on the costume and we could finish Santa's job ourselves. You mean, the 50-foot nerds could save Christmas? That's the plot of the Santa Claus. Mike, this whole sketch is the plot of the Santa Claus. Sure, if I wrote it. But apart from the murdering, that's new. Well, I, I can't think of anything better to do. Open the sack and check the presents. Where do we start? Let's see. Hmm. We've got some calipers here for wee Declan Quinn in Ireland. A uh, new set of face-cutting knives for Shiny. He's on the nice list. Apparently. Uh, there's a spazzy chicken for Lee over in the States. Uh, there's Sean Connor's grandson. Ah, here's a local one. Shall we go visit Joe? Yeah, go on. To the roof! Nice time cut for the edit. Thanks. I'll answer the compliments and say that that suit fits your skinny bastard frame rather well, Santa Paul. Because he was a fat bastard. Thanks again. Right. Now, how do I get the reindeer going? Isn't there a rhyme with their names? Uh, go Steve, go Fluffy on Horace and Chantel. Go Peaches, go Crack Pipe on Morris and Montel. And Adolf, you can go as well. Adolf? <laughs> Adolf the Nazi reindeer hated all the blacks and Jews. You never read that song? That's fucked up. Whoa, and we're off! 
Bloody hell, that fast! Are we there yet? Go south, Max. I will turn this sleigh around. Like, why don't we pass the time with a nice chat that we could also record and use as a podcast? I wondered why you brought the microphones. Ah, always thinking, my boy, always thinking. Well, boys, it looks like that's the last child on the list. We've made it! Hooray! Hooray! Oh, I am absolutely fucked. Let's go home. Ah, there's nothing like being back in your own house, with your own stuff, and your own dead father Christmas. Oh, bollocks, I'd forgotten about him. You might have forgotten, boys, but I haven't. Oh, fuck me! Kill it! Again! Shit! I left the shotgun in Russia when the Yetis attacked us! No, boys. It was all game to <laughs> Hold on. <coughs> <coughs> all right. Would you like a cough drop? Oh, I love one! That's the thing about living in the North Pole. You catch a lot of colds. Not a problem. How are you still alive? Ho, 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 ho. It's quite simple. I can't die. I'm Father Christmas, bitch. This was all a test to see if you boys truly know the meaning of Christmas. It's all about giving and not receiving. What better way for you to learn it than to give to the whole world? You can't. I beg your pardon? I've got to agree that was a shitty thing to do. If there's one thing the 50-foot nerds don't like, it's lying red bastards who tried to teach us a lesson like the PSAs at the end of an 80s cartoon. G.I. Joe. Is this really the time? Sorry. I think there's only one thing for it. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? You know I'm thinking it. What? Why are you all looking at me like that? Time for you to take a trip to the shower fridge. No! 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 Mike! Mike, wake up! Slap him! What what happened? Paul slapped you. You bastard! Ow! And he told me to! You bastard! Well, uh, anyway, I just had the strangest dream. You were there, and you were there, and, well, that was about it. But wait, let me pull back the curtains in an audio descriptive fashion. What a beautiful day, and not a dead fat man in sight. Okay, if you say so. You there, in the street, what day is this? Fuck off, you master. Okay. You boy in the street, what day is this? Why it's his nervous day, sir. Then take this shiny sixpence and buy me the biggest goose you can. Now run, run as fast as you can, boy. I can't even walk in, consider a prick. Ha, <laughs> the spirit bucko. Mike, are you feeling okay? I'm feeling fantastic. I'm just glad that last night you didn't shoot Santa Claus and he isn't currently locked inside Andy's shower fridge. But Mike... That did happen last night. Nah, I'm just messing with you. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. A little later. Another year almost over, and time for Christmas once again. Yeah, and we all remember what happened last year. I hope you've got rid of that shotgun. 
Of course I did! I had to, didn't I? It had my fingerprints on it. Whatever happened to Santa's corpse? Did we ever take it out of the shower fridge? Um, I'm not sure. Kids, if you don't understand that reference, then go back and listen to the 2013 Christmas special. Well, let's just hope nothing like that happens again this year. I just want a nice, normal Christmas where nothing out of the ordinary happens. Oh, come on! If you wanted that, then you wouldn't write these wacky sketches where things go crazy every year. Well, it's bedtime now, so Santa's not coming, so what can possibly happen? Me and my big mouth. Larry! Curly! Mo! Thank God I found you! We're the 50-foot nerds, not the Three Stooges. And you're Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Oh, crap. I mean, oh, good. You're just who I was looking for. We weren't, were we? Well, no. Well, I'm here now, I suppose. So where is it, then? What? A Christmas present. It's Christmas Eve, after all. <gasps> Great Scott! You mean you time-travelled here and didn't even realise the date? Hey, I'm a mad scientist, not Amazon.com, okay? I don't have much room in the car for parcels! Well, what can you give us, then? Well, I guess I could always give us a trip in time in the DeLorean. Well, I was gonna say I'd get your subscription to Nerdblock.com, but okay! So, what do we fancy? Past or the future? I think it'd be interesting to see our ancestors and what they were interested in. Sounds good to me. I hope none of you get airsick. This baby can really fly. Wow. Everything looks so small from up here. That's what she said. I beg your pardon, you <laughs> cheeky little shit. <laughs> Why, ya yada? Why are you making jokes about his penis? <laughs> because it's small. Oh, you Christ stay you. out of this, old man! Hey, look, guys, 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 there's Joe. I think he's on his way to our place right now with a present. I hope the nerds like the Christmas chutney I've got for them. What the? A flying DeLorean? What the hell is going on? Okay, boys, your forebears are just in the next room, recording their radio program. They had a radio program? Heavens, yes! Why, just go in and hear it! I say, chaps, what say you of that ripping new cinemagraph playing at the moving pitch house? Why, it was tremendously spiffing, old bean. The moment I saw the locomotive barreling towards me, I nearly sold my slacks. I concur wholeheartedly, my good man. Andrew, how did you fare if you win the piece? I must confess, good sirs, I've not laid eyes upon the beast as yet. Of course, we should have realised, old chap. Our esteemed colleague here has not progressed to the moving picture as yet. Indeed, he barely understands the nature of recording on a wax cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair being discriminated in this way. My faculty in our threesome is to discuss the latest editions of fiction published in the printed format. And what, pray tell, was the last piece of prose you consumed? I believe it was Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. <laughs> Why, Andrew, that book was first published 40 years ago in the mid-1880s. So, boys, what did you think of your ancestors? I've realised that not much changes. And I've realised that I'd look awesome with a handlebar moustache and a bowler hat. I've realised I probably need to finish that book. Well, that's enough for now, don't you think? I'd better get you home to the future! Hang on. We haven't seen ourselves. I mean, what happens to us, our future? I really shouldn't take you to the future. It never ends well. Go on, it'll be a laugh. Well, it's your funeral. Right, we've arrived 30 years into your future. The year 2044, to be exact. Wow! Everything looks so... High-tech! Ooh, look at this I just picked up. 
I'm impressed too, but I won't describe anything to cover my back in case it never actually gets invented. We're just in time to hear you recording another episode of the podcast! We're still doing it in the future. And no matter. You've been doing it this whole time, apart from the year of the Mole Men invasion. What Mole Men? Nothing! Forget I said anything. Oh, Andy. Poor, poor Andy! Well, I guess we'd better poke our heads around this door, then. This is the 50 Foot Nerds Podcast. Thank you for streaming us into your vein pods. Ah, greetings, mortals. Welcome to the 50 Foot Nerds. I am your overlord, Micros. Joining me in your audio slavery are... This is Paul Griggs. Back in my day, we had radio cassette players, and Monster Munch were the size of your fist. And our other host. As usual, Andy Weirs is joining us from inside his bike box after his terrible accident. My friend's coins used to be enormous. Who have you been lording over this week, my underlings? There's two seven o'clocks in a day. And what about... All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Ice is back with a brand new invention. I've had enough of this. Oh, my God. How did I get that way? How did you get that way? What the fuck happened to me? Actually quite see the cyborg look, don't you think? I lose the third electronic eye. Yeah. I wonder where Joe is in the future, though. Right. That's enough now. I need to take you boys back home. Into the time machine. Quick now, we're taking off. Hold on, boys. I had to buy future chutney. What the... A flying DeLorean? I haven't seen one of those since. So this is what the Time Vortex looks like then, eh? Doesn't look anything like the Avon Doctor, do. Hey Doc, what's this stick? Andy, wait! You've knocked the dock out with the rape stick, Andy. Oh, well, could be worse. It's worse he fell off the car. I didn't know it was a rape stick, did I? Actually, Andy, can I have that over? Oh, let me guess. We're going to travel back to before Scarlett Johansson had the breast reduction. Don't be so last year, Paul. It's all about Emma Roberts these days. God, the things I'd do to her. Happening? No, it's just down sitting. Well, I think I know enough about time travel to get us home. Let me over. No, I want to do it. Hang on, what about me? <laughs> oh, fuck. Is everyone okay? I, I think so. I'm alive. Just about. Where are we? Scratch that. When are we? Whoa, 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 whoa there, easy girl. Having trouble with your cart there, fellas. You could say that. I don't see any horse tracks around, though. They must have bolted some time ago. We didn't have any horses. How on earth did you get out here, then? Well, it's hard to explain. Odd question, but where are we and what date is it? You boys must have hit your heads or something. You're in Nerd Valley, Christmas Day, 1885. Listen, let me pull the cart back into town, let me and my wife look after you, and in the morning I can help you fix your cart. Well, thank you. What's your name? The name's McQuinn. Declan McQuinn. This is it, boys. Me humble home. The first one my family will know on American soil. Why, I've met my wife here. Amy girl, come meet Mike, Andy and Paul. Well, howdy do there, stranger folk. Y'all boys done damn been stranded in them the wilderness. What? Y'all spread your feet up and relax and anything y'all need. Y'all just give me a holler. Just call out, hey, my girl, and I'll come a-running. I don't mean to sound impolite, Mr. McQuinn, 
but I can't understand a fucking word she's saying. Ah, it's okay. You get used to it. What was that? Oh, no. That big old man dog must be back in town. The fuck are you saying? McQuinn, hide. Mad dog, Memum and his posse are back in town. Ah, uh, be Jesus. Mad dog, Memum? Aye, Mad Dog Joe Meeman, notorious outlaw, runs with his gang, The Omen. The Omen? No, that's a film. He said The Omen. Yeah, that's the film, isn't it? No, you're thinking of The Omen. He said The Omen. They both sound the same to me. He asked me to shoe his horses last time he was in town. Rumour has it, they threw their shoes only a day or two later, and ever since then he's been after me. Going out here, McQuinn. You mean to have words. Why don't you leave him alone? You got a problem with him. You got a problem with us. Who's us? Who are you three runts? And why are you hiding that cowardly mule? We're the 50 foot nerds, and this guy here is our friend. Oh, really? Care to take a bullet for him, partner? Well, when I say friend, he's more of an acquaintance. <laughs> An associate. Hey pal, I never even saw this asshole before. Hey, hey, Mad Dog, just leave these guys alone. I'm the guy you have a problem with. You had your chance, McQuinn. These gems have taken on your debt now. You just had to open your mouth, didn't you, Mike? I'll tell you what, I'm feeling generous. Seeing as it's Christmas and all, I'm not gonna shoot you right now. Oh. That's sweet of you. We duel at dawn. You choose your best hand against mine. Last man standing wins. You're on, mad dog. Oh, fuck. Good. And just to prove I'm not shitting you here. <laughs> oh, my knees. My creaky knees. <laughs> Why does that sound so familiar? Don't you bleed to death before I can put you down myself, McQuinn. Yeah! Shit. Are you okay, Mr. McQuinn? Oh, I think so. I'll be okay. Hey, me girl, it happened again. God dang it, y'all need to stop running that damn big mouth of yours! Oh, quiet, woman. Go fetch the bandage cloth and alcohol. Damn it, you fool! Should've done what Mama told me and married my cousin Cletus! Cleaning the wound out? That's sensible. You'll get an infection otherwise. It's not for me. I figure you boys should be out of your skull by the time he comes back to kill you in the morning. Wait a sec. How long is it until dawn, Mr. McQuinn? A few hours or so. Why? Well, if you can get our time as uh, uh, a cart repaired, then we can all get out of here and no one gets shot. Well, you boys have a damn funny looking cart, but, well, dang it, I'll give it my best shot. Good man. So, what do we do until it's fixed? Time to get more booze? Actually, I have a better idea. After last year's high jinks, I had a feeling something would go wrong again, so I brought the recording equipment with me. Hooray! We probably should, seen as we spent so long on the opening sketch. <laughs> well, guys, sunrise. Seems like our goose is cooked. Wait, what goose? Is someone making dinner for us? Why wasn't I informed? It's just a phrase, Andy. There's not literally a goose. Ah, uh, so it's like when someone says, keep stalking me and I'll call the police. They don't really mean it. No, it's not like that at all. Ah. Well, when we get back home, I might have to disappear for a short time. You mean if we get back home? Are we looking, Declan? I've done all I can do, but it's too late. Mad Dog will be here any minute, and there's no time to get away. You dumb son bitch! Y'all should have worked faster on this damn town vehicle! That's it. Time's up. Hey, Runtz, get them damn asses out here. You boys ready? Not really, no. Hang on a minute. I think I have a plan. Well, it's about damn time you showed up. 
I thought you was gonna be yeller and I'd have to come in there and get you myself. Mad Dog, I'm asking you to reconsider this. Yeah, I mean, what's the point in shooting us? The point? The point? The point is that you assholes stood up to me. Nobody stands up to me. And they especially don't stand up to me to protect that no good McQuinn. Instead of all this anger towards him, have you ever actually thought of just sitting down and discussing things with him? You know, like men? You calling me a woman? Sure, things get lonely out on the prairie at night. And occasionally, my posse will curl up together for snuggins. But that ain't queer or nothing. And it still ain't queer if, from time to time, I like to wear women's underclothes. I just find them to be kinder on my skin after a hard day's ride. What. The. Fuck. Enough of this. One of you boys better pull your sidearm right now. Let's do this. I have a better idea, actually. What? Did it work? Perfectly. I can't believe that I just witnessed the first person in history to be run over by a car, and they haven't even been invented yet. We won't be bothering you anymore, Declan. I can't thank you guys enough. You really saved me bacon. There's bacon now, too? It's another phrase, Andy. Oh. So, Declan, I was thinking, you and Amy, girl. It doesn't seem to me like you guys have the happiest of marriages. Why don't you come back to the future with us? Well, I'd love to see what the work is like in 130 years. But my place is here. And Amy girl, yeah, she's a handful, but she fucks like a saloon girl, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I do, sir. <laughs> well, we'd best be off. It was lovely to meet you. Me too. And me. It was me pleasure. If you ever find yourselves back in time, come say hello. Right, I best find Dr. Brown and get these creaky knees of mine looked at. Take care, boys. Did he just say Doc? Get in the car, Andy. But he said... Andy, get in. Oh, thank God we're home at last. I can put my feet up, have a nice cup of tea, and I'm at home in time for Christmas Eve movie on the telly. I'd best be heading off to see the wife and kids guys they get awfully annoyed if i don't pay them a little attention at christmas at least that's what i think they said i wasn't really listening and as for me i'm going to take these clips of demonica i have on my handy dandy tablet and go and have a white christmas hurry ron hermione thank god i found you Oh God, not you again. You need to come back with me. Back where? Back to the future. It's your kids, nerds. Something has to be done about your kids. They turn into real cunts. Oh, fuck this. Jesus Christ, Paul. Where do you keep getting shotguns from? Well, I don't know. They just appear in the script. Oh, well, let's get on with our annual Christmas tradition of chucking dead bodies in a ditch. It's only a tradition if it happens for three years or more. Well, you'd better write someone into next year's sketch for me to kill them, hadn't you? Sorry I'm late with the chutney, guys. You won't believe what I saw in the sky earlier. Oh. Um... Hi, Joe? Guys? Why is Doc Brown dead in the living room? Oh, that's a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> Much later.
Ah, Christmas. Only feels like 365 days since the last one. Yeah, 365 days of crazy shit with you guys. What else do you expect? Well, I'd say you know the drill and to brace yourself for another madcap wacky adventure, but this year I just fancy a nice, quiet night in. So we can't... Don't, Andy. But I'm just saying... No! Oh, I was looking forward to having a Hanukkah adventure with Optimus Prime. Sorry, Optimus. Don't worry, Andrew. There's always Passover. Hell yeah! And don't call me Andrew. Dreidelbots, roll out! Shalom, motherfucker! How do you know Optimus Prime? Well, you know how these things go. I'm more confused as to why he's Jewish. Oh, uh, Cybertronians have a multi-faith system in place, the same way we do. For example, Optimus is Jewish, Bumblebee is a Muslim, and Starscream is a Buddhist. What's Megatron? He's quite the Harry Krishna as it goes. Ah. Makes sense when you think about it, really. Well, that'll be the end of our annual Christmas shenanigans. Holy fuck, Weasels, it's the Grampus! I knew he was real! Paul, kill it! No! I kill something every year. I don't want to do it again. Well, I don't want to die. Me either. Guys, no! Please! Please. Hooray! Hooray! Another Christmas myth proven and subsequently murdered by the 50-foot nerds. Yes. What's the matter, Paul? You saved our lives. It's just... I think I need to go out and clear my head. You don't have to... Go. <laughs> it's fucking cold out on this bridge. I probably should have brought a jacket. <sighs> Penny for your thoughts, friend. <gasps> Blimey. Where did you sneak up from? Oh, I'm just headed home. I've been to the new Glamour Cinema with the Usherettes in. Know it? Know it? I practically live there. I go for the Morgan Freeman marathons. The name's Clarence. Well, I'm Paul. So come on, what's got you out here? On the edge of a bridge contemplating suicide on Christmas Eve? How did you know I was contemplating suicide? Side of a bridge plus Christmas Eve equals suicide attempt. I don't have to be Peter Falk to work it out. Well, ever since I joined the Attack of the 50 Foot Nerds podcast, every year I've ended up murdering someone on Christmas Eve. And I'm um, getting a bit fed up, to be honest. Well, uh, classic case of FTP. FTP? Fuck this place. What if I said there was a way to see how things would have worked out if you had never joined? If the podcast never existed? I'd say you were bullshitting. It's true. I can. Who are you? I mean, really... Are you my guardian angel? Think of me more as a dork knight. So what do we have to do? Wait! What are you guys doing here? We just popped out for some chutney. We forgot Joe's present. So you didn't come to stop me killing myself? No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Well, Clarence here was just about to... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a wonderful life parody. I know, I wrote it. Let's just get on with it. Radio, here we are. This is what the world would be like if the 50 Foot Nerds podcast never existed. Motorbikes? 80s hair metal? A gigantic casino hotel made from an old converted clock tower? Oh god, are we really parodying Back to the Future again? When you write the Christmas scripts, you can parody whatever movies you wanted. Exactly. Because of you, the whole world looks like alternate 1985. Yeah, but we're still around, aren't we? I mean, even though we've never met and don't do the podcast, we're still alive, aren't we? Who said you'd never met? But I thought... I just said podcast didn't exist, but you all have quite different lives. Shall we see?
I should have known you'd be behind all this. Only your diseased mind could have come up with such an evil plan, Dekoroth. Holy crap, that's me! I'm an actor, playing the Doctor! You start as the villain? Yes, you should have guessed Doctor, but you didn't, proving ultimately that I, Dekroth, creator of the Daleks, have the superior mind. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Isn't it obvious? You aren't the superior mind at all. You completely missed the fatal flaw in your plan. A flaw I can exploit with a simple flick of my non-copyright specific sonic spanner. I said, a simple flick of my non-copyright specific sonic spanner. Damn it, motherfucking props department. Kurt! Shit the bed, it's me! What are you doing here? I think he's the director. The director? But, but I don't watch movies. Not in your world, but in this world you're a director on par with Tim Burton. You mean I'm a Disney sellout and not as good as I used to be? Which makes you the perfect director for a Doctor Who movie. Fucking working prop is all I ask for, Andy. A fucking working fucking prop. What do I get? This fucking piece of shit. Christ! I'm a cunt! Hey, like, chill out, Paul. I'm sure it was just a mistake and we can rectify it so you can, like, live my vision of the movie, man. Your vision? Your fucking vision? The villain is played by a fucking cripple for fuck's sake. He's like... Differently abled, man. That's why I went with him, so it sends an empowering message to the universe. I think you'll find I'm the cunt. Guys, let's settle this. You're both cunts. Are you okay in your costume, Declan? I'm worried about triggering, like, an emotional state in you, man. No, I'm grand. I'm used to not being able to walk by now. What will my knees? Oh, my poor creaky knees. Hey, that guy playing the villain. He looks familiar. Oh, fuck all this. I'll be in my trailer. Wheels! Oh no, dude, it's him. Him? Him who? The man who owns the Pleasure Paradise Hotel, Casino, Keys Cut and Shoes Mended. The filming location we're stood in right now. You were supposed to be finished filming by now, you little son of a bitch. Oh my god! It's Mike! I don't look too shabby. You look like Donald Trump. And what exactly is your point? He's your next president of the United States of America? I fucking hope not. We, like, were, but we ran over. You should speak to my producer, Joe. Joe? Joe? Now, Mr. Bell. I know we're here a little longer than I said we would be, but... A little longer? Damn it, John. Do you know how much money I'm losing while your crew is overrunning in my casino? What the hell do you care? You can afford it. In fact, do you know what? That's a wrap, everyone. Let's pack up and leave. Wow. Joe's treating you like a bitch. Sure, go ahead. But think about this, Joe. Who's gonna pay for your clothes, eh? And your jewelry and your booze. Who's gonna pay for your cosmetic surgery? Erm. Um, you walk out that door, I'll not only cut off you, I'll cut off your kids. Mr. Bell. First your daughter Linda. I'll cancel all her credit cards. She can settle her debts with the bank all by herself. Your idiot son Dave, I'll get his bail revoked. And as for Marty, <laughs> well, maybe you'd like all three of your kids behind bars, just like your brother Joey. One big happy jailbird family. Now who's the bitch? Mr. Bell. First of all, I have only two children, not three. And neither are called Dave. Secondly, I have no idea on earth what you are talking about. Or what it has to do with this production. Oh, sorry, I must have got you confused for a moment with my wife, Lorraine. But as for you, I'll be back up here in an hour, so you better not be. You're a bastard, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, alternate me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Mike is the one most like his original self. No one asked you! Only I'm allowed to say that, you little cheeky little shit lady, you bastard. Now that you've spent a little time seeing what could have been, are you ready to go home? 
Mm, can we have some time, please? What? Yeah, I, 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 I think we need to digest what we've just seen. I suppose so. I'll be back soon, then. Might head downstairs and try the lobster buffet. How are we going to pass the time, then? Um... Time to get more booze? No. Christmas pod? Christmas pod. Well, boys, I can honestly say that's probably the most insane Christmas pod we've ever done so far. Don't blame me. It's a gift, what can I say? Sorry it's so long, guys. Let's just say the shellfish in my digestive system didn't agree. Yeah, but it was free. Yeah, it's free, but you get what you pay for. Yeah, and it was free. I don't think you understand. What's to understand it was free? It gave me the shit. <laughs> TMI Clarence. I was going to have some of that as well. The lobster, not Clarence's shit. You've put me right off now, though. Oh, enough of this shit. Stop talking about shit, mate. Paul. Paul, I brought you all here because you were going to kill yourself. In this reality, you're an egomaniacal actor. Andy, you're a douchebag, pretentious movie director set out, and Mike, you're Biff Tannen. You've seen how grim the alternative is. Aren't you glad you do the podcast now? Well, no. What? In this universe, everything has worked out great. I play Doctor Who in a movie. That's a dream come true. And I make movies. Okay, I probably won't watch them, unless I watch two of them twice in one month, but... Other people probably will. And I'm married to Marty McFly's mum. You got the big tits in Oh yeah, and I'm rich as well. So what are you saying? We don't want to go back. Well, tough. We're going. Hey, we're back on the bridge. That must mean we're back home after all. Now, don't you feel better? Do I fuck? Andy? What? Give it to me. I beg your pardon? You know what I mean. I, I'm, I dread to think what you mean. What? Give you what? Clarence, someone is going to die on this bridge tonight after all. But it's sure as hell not going to be me. Is it Mike? <laughs> it's a wonderful life, bitch. That was surprisingly badass. I have my moments. You know, even though the alternate world was pretty cool, I'm kind of glad I'm back here with you guys. If I'm destined to kill someone with a shotgun every year, then I can think of no finer people to do it with. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. Hey, look! The sun's coming up. It's Nerdmas Day, guys. Wanna run through the streets shouting Merry Nerdmas at people? Okay! okay. Merry Nerdmas, Mr. Pimples! Hello! Merry Nerdmas, Mad Eye Moody! Come on, you bastard! Merry Nerdmas, Movie House! You, you don't, don't watch, watch movies. movies! I don't care! Merry Christmas, you wonderful old goose shop! Merry Christmas, Brian Quinn from TV's Impractical Jokers! Oh, fuck you! Fuck your mother! Fuck your father! Fuck your grandmother! Have a good night! Merry Nerdmas, Nerd HQ. Oh, we're home. That was fast. Why do we live next door to the goose shop anyway? Well, when I was looking for somewhere, I used Sean Connery's grandson as an estate agent. Long story short, he says goose shop. I thought he said goose shop. The accent was confusing. Excuse me, kind nerds. Yes? Can I help you? You look familiar. That's because tis I, sir. We Declan Quinn. I brought you that goose you asked for. Oh, goose. I've not asked for a goose. Mike, have you been sleep asking for geese again? Can we stop saying the word goose? You did ask me, sir. You threw a shiny sixpence and sent me on an errand. Sixpence? sixpence. That was two years ago? It's taken you that long to get to the goose shop and back? Aye, sir. And I went as fast as I possibly could. Fast? We live next door to the goose shop. Ah, my knees. My poor creaky knees. 
Jesus, Paul! Don't you start either. Put the gun down, Paul. I'm not afraid to use it. We noticed! Run! I can't, you insensitive prick. <laughs> That is all, folks. Ooh, chutney. Much, much later. Hello, good evening, and welcome. It is I, Future Joe. Gather round, my friend, while I tell you a tale about the Badger Wars. <laughs> Hanukai, Hanukai, yon te fashener, a lustiger, a freilicher, nito no fazener, alle nacht in dreidel spiel mir. Finally, after all this time waiting, I can at last have my Hanukkah adventure with the Transformers. What do you say, Optimus? I've got a dreidel, I'm wearing a yarmulke, can I join your kosher crew now? We covered this last year, Andrew. Pretending to be Jewish does not make you Jewish, you schnook. My name's Andy. Oh please, I've even bought a menorah! Do you even know what a menorah is? Uh, is it a clock? I'm sorry, but I really must be going. Wait, listen, I really am Jewish. Um, Oi, I've got to pick up some bagels and gefilte fish from the deli before that schlemiel throws them away. Um, Rabbis? Woody Allen? Goodbye, Andrew. Please stop emailing me. Andy, why are you looking so glum? Paul, Mike, when did you come in? Just now. Was that Optimus Prime again? Yeah. Still won't take you on a Hanukkah adventure? No. You probably shouldn't have been eating a bacon sandwich while you were asking. But it tastes so good! I know, and I'm sorry to be a Scrooge, but I don't want any adventures this year. Last time almost killed me! This year, I just want to sit home and have a nice, relaxing time with the people I love. Why aren't you with your wife and kids, then? Because I have to say what you write in the script. For example, I have a tiny penis and get turned on wearing women's underwear. That's not in my script. Okay, Paul, I won't write any Christmas adventures into the script. Honest. Wink. Why did you just say wink? Because this is an audio medium and no one can see me if I actually wink. Good point. I think the fourth wall just exploded. Can you have a fourth wall on audio? You know what I mean. Holy crap! It's the time-travelling phone booth. Not the good one. I mean, the other one. You know, from Bill and Ted. Whoa. Greetings, gentlemen. Paul, is that you? Uh, I think so. It's something a bit weird about my face, though. Uh, I'm Paul from the future. There's a lot I can't tell you about. But thanks for bringing it up, dick. Well, it's good to see you, too. Don't come any closer! You can't touch me. We're the same person, and if our atoms occupy the same space, then it could make the universe implode. Ah, uh, the Blinovich limitation effect. Well, I'm sold. Sounds like the kind of sci-fi bollock you'd come out with. Future Paul, did you come back in time on your birthday? Your voice sounds very different. When you're a time traveler, every day can be your birthday. Sounds plausible. Are you sure that's not just a lame excuse to have a different voice in here so people don't get confused with me talking to someone with the same voice? Shut up, Paul. Yeah, shut up, Paul. Hey! Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Greetings, gentlemen! I am Paul from your future, and I offer you this gift of a trip through time to visit those who have had an impact on your lives. 
you get one trip each. One to the past, one to the present, and one to the future. So a bit like the ghosts from Scrooge, then? If you want to call it that, yeah. Ha-ha! See, Paul, we are having a Christmas adventure after all! Bollocks! I leave you this gift, gentlemen. When you're finished, just dial star 69. <laughs> 69. Yeah, I know, right? Well, until then, gentlemen... Well, chaps, we've got a choice to make. Where to first? I know where I'd like to go. Remember a couple of years ago when we visited the future? Yeah, you were in the pipe box after the Badger Wars. Yeah, that's right. So I want to go there and find out just what happened in the Badger Wars to make me that way. Uh, let's see. Uh, boobs, badgers, no, no, I can't see anything in this phone book about Badger Wars. But a far future, you. Oh, well, that's a start. Let's go! then back in the future once again for a podcast about pop culture we really could get ahead of the game with the amount we piss about time traveling yeah 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 coulda woulda shoulda young me hello future me hello i've been waiting for you to arrive i put the kettle on thanks future me i have to say you've got a great view out of this window you live very high up and i like your choice of music it really makes me want to jam my michael vincents we all live high up in the future. We live in mega blocks thousands of feet high. Mega blocks, like in Judge Dredd. No, like the knockoff Lego. Well, where are all these badges then? I thought there was a badger war. No badges here unless I miss them. I could ask my neighbour next door. Well, hang on, I'm coming too. No, wait, it's a narrow walk. Ah, ah, ah. Shit. Shit? Shit! Mike, you just fucking killed me! Well, to be fair, we don't know he's dead. Yeah, 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 see? See, down there? There? Yeah, there? That future person is tending to him. Future Andy, are you okay? It looks like you've fallen down the stairs. What happened? It was the Badgers! There's a Badger War! Badger Wars? Badgers? Badger Wars? Don't try to talk, future Andy. I'll get you to our pike box as soon as possible. Then we can both go and eat future chutney. I think we'd best move on to the next stop. Are we now? It looks a bit more familiar to our time. Close, but we're still in the past. We've gone to visit one of my icons. I've always wanted to ask him a question. Who's that then? Who the bloody hell are you then? Mr. Lennon, it's an honour to meet you. I'd say likewise if I knew who you were and why you were shaking my hand like that. We've come to meet John Lennon. Imagine that. Could you get off my drum bit, please? Sorry. You are still better than Ringo, though. Getting back to the matter at hand, Mr. Lennon, if I could, I'd like to ask you a question. <sighs> okay, but then I need to get on with my day. I've got a lot on, you know. Okay, here goes. Let's hope it's a good one. 
without any fear. Guys, please. Okay, well, what I really wanted to know is... Is... Is Paul McCartney really dead? What? Well, it's just that I've always heard the Paul is dead rumours, and my name is Paul too, and... Of course he's dead. What? Yeah, never expected that answer. I drowned him in a fish tank. That one, right there. Oh, Moppets! Now you know the truth. It's time I drowned you too. Wait! Why? You know the truth, I can't let you live. You could have just not told us. Huh. I didn't think of that. Quick, while he's distracted, into the time machine! Damn. Oh well, I'll have to write this in my diary later. December 8th. 1980. Hey Yoko, I'm just going for a walk in the park. Are you coming? Finally, we're back home. A trip to the future, the past, and back to the present. Um, no, we didn't actually go to the present. But that's what we were supposed to do. Yeah, but the person with the most impact on my life is me. And I'm not in the future. I'm here. I cannot argue with that logic. So I figured the best place to visit me would be the only place I knew I would be. Boys... We are currently in the maternity ward of Mill Road Hospital on the 20th of June, 1984. And that little handsome chap right there, that would be baby me. That's you? That fat one there? No, n next to the fat one. I was pointing at that one. Why are you wearing a potato sack instead of a baby grow? It was the 80s and the NHS didn't have any money. Are you going to pick yourself up? Are you mad? Remember what you said, you can't touch your past self or the universe will explode! Someone else will have to do it. I'll do it! Aww, you were actually pretty cute as a baby. Fuck knows what happened when you grew up. Sit on a dick. Sweet Jesus, what are you doing in here? Put me baby down. Do you mean your baby? This is me, um, I mean, m my baby. I know the wee baby Declan anywhere. I came to take him to his mammy. Baby Declan? Andy, don't drop the... Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> Saints of Begora, what have you done to me poor baby? Me poor sweet Declan. His poor knees will be creaky for all his days now. Listen, Mr. Quinn, there's clearly been some mistake. Oh, I'll say so. Get your ass back here for a weapon. Run away! Quickly, into this cupboard. What the hell happened? I thought that baby was you, not Declan. I've obviously misdialed in the phone booth. He's exactly one year older than me to the day. And don't forget, Andy, you crippled him. Well, that's what he gets, the potato-eating birthday-stealing bastard. Well, we're stuck in here now while his dad is searching for us. How will we pass the time? Christmas pod? Christmas pod. What can you see, Paul? Is the coast clear? Mm, seems to be. Right, let's get back to the time machine and get home before we run afoul of any more Irishmen. Well, don't drop any more newborns and we won't have to worry about that. Agreed! The sooner we're back home and rid of this time machine, the better. 
Every time we time travel, it causes nothing but trouble. Trouble, sketch plot, potato, tomato. Good morning, both of you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a Merry Christmas to you too, Andy. It's a lovely Christmas Day morning outside. I slept great after arriving back from our travels last night and sending the time machine back to future me as instructed. That was an awfully specific greeting. It certainly was. Plus the question remains, why did you stay here last night in Nerd HQ with Andy and I instead of at home with your family? Goodness me! I forgot about my fa family. I'll just go and freshen up and then I'll go visit them. I don't think he should time travel anymore. He's starting to get memory seizures. I agree. Last year you thought Christmas was in March. Whoa, it's the time machine. What's it doing here? I think this is where it must have got sent to last night after we got back. But I thought we were sending it back to future Paul. Hmm. I've got an idea. Pass me that photograph and that stapler. There you go. I could have taken out the frame first. Sorry. And now to cut here and here and ow! Right there. What do you think? I think you've stapled a photo of Paul to your face. But why? Because I'm gonna go back in time to last night and play a joke on him by telling him to take a trip in the time machine for no reason. What? That makes no sense. Um, why have you stapled a photo of Paul to your face? You know, he does it at the end of Deadpool, doesn't he? And yes, it does make sense because it's a total waste of his time. And ours? Yeah, but now we're on the joke. Now we are? You'll never pull it off, you don't even sound like him. Oh no? Ahem. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Birthday Paul, Freedom Fries at Armadillo's! All hail President Trump! That's pretty good. Right, I'm going back to last night. Don't touch any of my stuff, or I'll cut out your teeth. Where's Mike? I thought I heard a noise. Oh, um, his phone rang? He had to take a phone call? Why are you answering me suspiciously? I don't know. Who's that? How should I know? It's Christmas morning, it's probably Joe or Declan. That's who it usually is in these scripts. Good morning. Are you the 50 foot nerds? Yes. Can we help you? My name is Nick Fury, and I'm here to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. No, you're not. What? You're not Nick Fury. He's right. Nick Fury was played by Samuel L. Jackson in the movies, and you're more than Freeman. Boys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. There is only one black actor in Hollywood, and that's me. When in black, I was Will Smith. Wild Wild West, I was Will Smith. Suicide Squad, I was Will Smith. Uh, just checking this Wikipedia. Uh, Were you in iRobot? I was. I was Will Smith. Okay. Hancock, I was Will Smith. I'm Legend, I was Will Smith. Do you play... Do you play anyone other than Will Smith? Yes, I do. Uh, the Matrix. I was the black guy in that. Uh, 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 Django. I was Django. I was also uh, Samuel L. Jackson. So I got I got paid twice for that movie. Mr. Freeman, can you tell me a story about how your life got flipped, turned upside down? Well, I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, and I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Were you Will Smith in that? 
I was Will Smith. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, other black guys, other black guys. Uh, Were you in the, the most recent remake of the Magnificent Seven? Possibly. I haven't seen it. <laughs> Rocky, I was Apollo Creed. Oh, Bad Boys, you were in that. I was. I played Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. Big Mama's house. I was Martin Lawrence. Crimson Tide. Obviously, you were in that. If you say so. Die Hard. I was the black guy who who, who stays in the basement. Uh, Argar. That's his name. Uh, uh Ving Rhames in uh, Dead, Dead, uh, Dawn of the Dead. That was that was me. Malcolm X? Malcolm X? Yep. Philadelphia? Yep. No, both, of, both of them. That's right. The Blade Trilogy? Blade. I was Blade. I was Blade. That's right. Me. I was Wesley Snipes. Mm-hmm. Demolition Man. Passenger 57. That was me. Uh, Assault on Precinct 13. If you want. Uh, all of the, the, you know, the Friday movies and Barbershop. I played every character in those. Oh, you must have been Richard Roundtree in the original Shaft, and then been Samuel L. Jackson in the remake. Shut your mouth. But he was talking about Shaft. Can you dig it? Uh, uh, Dogma, I was Chris Rock. Mm. Oh. Paul, what are you... Are you wanking? What? No, uh, uh, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. Yes, um, I can't help it. It's it's just those sexy dulcet tones. They make me all. Mm. Oh fuck this! You've killed him. You've killed Morgan Freeman. But 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 his voice, his sweet sexy voice. I don't care, I'm not standing next to you while you're wanking. Now come on, zip yourself up and help me shift this body before Joe or whoever turns up. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm a generically American accent of Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise? Hey, does this mean you're here to talk about psych- I'm here because it looks like you need help with that impossible mission. Isn't that that guy you asked me to show him the money? I don't know, Tom. Is it? And that, my friends, was how we won the Badger Wars. Now, excuse me while I go to eat future chutney. Much, much later. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, except Mike the dirty bastard. What the fuck was that for, Paul? Sorry, I was having the most terrible nightmare. I mean, I 
having them a lot recently. I'm not surprised. You must get PTSD every Christmas based on our past experiences. And you can hear all those escapades in our back catalogue of episodes. Who are you talking to? Optimus Prime! Fuck off, Andy. It's not as much fun anymore since he took out the restraining order. Back to the plot, though, Paul. These nightmares, are they the same every night? Yeah! They always start off the same, with the three of us all talking together, just like we are now, before I end up getting chased by a man with... Knives for fingers! Yeah, how did you know? I've had the same dream. Me too. In fact, thinking back, the guy kind of reminded me of... Freddy, Freddy Krueger! How do we know if we're awake or asleep now? That's easy, I'll just ask this centaur. He might know. If I'm lying, then you're not dreaming and I always tell the truth! See? The Bane centaur says there's nothing to worry about. Hang on a minute... Wait, when did we get the Bane centaur? When you entered my world, bitch! Shit the bed, it's Fred! Alright, Johnny rhymes a lot. Look who's talking, Vanilla Slice. Alright, stop. Elaborate and listen! Fuck you. There's only one kind of slice I'm interested in, and that's across your torso! Andy, watch out for his claw slashes, which I'm describing as it's actually quite a visual thing. Whoa! In hindsight, a Nightmare on Elm Street parody was a poor choice. The only poor choice you made was falling asleep. Hang on a second. Mr. Kruger, don't you only go after teenagers? I'm not a child. I'm practically a pensioner. I'm so old. God damn it, Mike. I wish you wouldn't write these scripts. I, I only write things that people would say naturally. I inappropriately touch dogs. See? Well, I think it's appropriate to spill your guts on the floor. <laughs> Leg it, nerds! Quick, jump into that car. We can outrun him. Whose car is this? It's Gary Oldman's car. Call yourself nerds? This is Kit from Knight Rider. Wrong, funny boy! This is a Nightmare Rider! <laughs> <laughs> the cheap belt choked me! It's alive! There's only one way out of this. We need to wake up! Paul, if you hit me, I'll wake up, and then I can wake you two up from the real world. I think you the face, not the balls. It worked. Hopefully he can wake us up soon. Oh, oh, balls gone now. Oh, couldn't have woken me up first. Oh, 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 what's the matter, Mike? Getting choked up. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. Well, you asked me to wake you up. True. Why is Paul holding his groin? Um... Payback's a bitch. Well, we need to make sure we don't fall asleep again tonight. Any ideas? Christmas pod. Christmas pod. My balls. Christmas pod, your balls indeed. There. That wasn't so bad now, was it? And we didn't even fall asleep like I did during the Popeye commentary. Yeah, well, lucky Freddy wasn't after us all those years ago. Well, I for one am glad it's all over. We so rarely get a chance to celebrate, but this time we must. Celebrate? Yes, it's Nerdmas, don't you remember? Or did this whole Freddy business give you memory seizures? Oh, so it is, yeah. Here's a toast. A happy Christmas to all of us. Same to you, Paul. Andy. Incidentally, a happy nerd to all of you at home. What was that? Uh, a new doorbell I had installed. I must have forgotten to mention it. Hello, nerds. It's wee Declan Quinn. 
And he's walking? What witchcraft is this? Grab the pitchforks and torches. Calm down, you pair. I'm sure there's a rational explanation. Paul's right, there is. I paid for surgery a few months ago and now I can walk again. Heck, I can even tap dance. Watch me go! Another Irish Lord of the Dance? I don't think so! Freddy's back! We must be asleep again! Oh my god! Don't let him get you, Declan! If you get hurt in a dream, you get hurt in real life! Ah. Shit! What do we do now? Mm -hmm. Nothing we can do. This isn't our dream. <sighs> Phew. It was just a dream. Wait a minute. My knees. My poor creaky knees. No! Declan Quinn. Audio engineer. Potato enthusiast and birthday stealer. Took a walk on the wild side with an unregistered surgeon named Freddy Krueger. An unregistered surgeon for beyond the 50 foot nerds. Much, much, much later. Hey you two, finish your Christmas shopping at last? Yeah, just in time. I had to fight an old woman for the last pack of pigs in blankets. Oh, Paul, I'm sure it wasn't that bad. No, really, he had a madness in his eyes I've never seen. She was in a pool of blood on the floor. She can't say I didn't warn her. It's probably not a good time to tell you that I bought some earlier. Oh, now you tell me. Well, why don't we take your mind off it with tonight's entertainment? I've lined up a bunch of movies for us to watch. Ooh, sounds fun. Yeah, can't go wrong with another nice, quiet Christmas night in like we've had for the last few years. It's been nice not having adventures, and I haven't fired my shotgun for a while. What's that you say, Chekhov? What did you call me, Captain? Oh, nothing, just a literary reference. Oh, look, a TV! Woman is fighting for her life tonight after a violent attack in Costco. The attacker, who was described as Where's Waldo with the voice of Warwick Davis. Let's start the movies. Hey, give me the remote. No, I should go first. I've never picked a movie for us before. No, give it to you. I'll pick. No, me. No, me. No, me. Give it to you. Give me that remote. Come on. Give, ah, no, it's my, give it to me. Why, God, that's God, my face. What? What did you press? Me? You must have done it. I barely touched it. That's what she said. Um... I did. <laughs> oh no, the screen has become a vortex! I'm getting sucked off! Gosh. Sucked off the couch! You never let me finish my sentence! <laughs> I blame Paul. He said no adventures. He bloody jinxed us. Me? You're the one who screwed things up for us. Let's face it, you did jinx us, Paul. Majority rules. Paul's a jinx. I'll jinx you in a minute. Look, I think we just need to figure out where we are. Then we can figure out how to get back. Well, looks like it's a big fancy house. Whoever lives here must be doing pretty well for themselves. Let's go upstairs and look around. Okay! Oof. Oof. Who swings paint cans down the stairs? That's why this place looks familiar. 
You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. I give up. <gasps> look, look! The door is full of TV static. That might be our way out of here. Let's go. Fuck you, Kevin! Where are we now? I don't know, but it's cold. Why don't we go into this building right here? It's under renovation. We can just get inside and sit down and figure things out. I'm up here, you morons! Oh, not again. another door full of static. Let's go! My face! Fuck you, Kevin! <sighs> oh, this is a bit more like it. We're indoors, it's warm, we're surrounded by boxes. Does it have paint cans or bricks? It looks like some kind of stock room for a toy store. Well, seeing as we don't get pelted with things right now, I call this an improvement. Let's just take a minute to take stock. Ha! <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think the first two were the Home Alone movies. Well, that makes sense. I had all the Home Alone movies queued up for us to watch. All the movies? Don't you mean both? No, there was four, there was four movies. Plus a fifth just came out on Disney+. Plus. Five movies! So this is Home Alone 3 then? The thing is, I don't remember any warehouses in Home Alone 3. Mike, you said that Home Alone 5 has just come out, yeah? Well, there was a TV movie as well, but yeah, technically number five just come out, yeah. So, presumably it's set at Christmas 2021? Logical. So, if we can somehow get to that movie, then all we need to do is get from there to home, and we'll be fine. Well, how do we jump around in a movie timeline? I think I know just the man who can help. Yeah! It is me, Howard Langston. Give me all your clothes, your boots, and your turbo man! Yeah! Oh god, it's Jingle all the way! It's pronounced Jingle all the way! I don't see any turbo man dolls, but how about a booster? Yeah, nobody likes a booster, especially not a COVID vaccine. Yeah! Give me the turbo man! Quick, I've got an idea. Hey Arnie, look over there! Okay, I will look at what I hope is not a distraction. Go, now, through that static door. Follow me. Where are we going? Hey, nobody gives me the cold shoulder. Freeze. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> you choose. Hey guys, welcome back to Movie Timelines. On in this episode, we'll be diving into the world of the Christmas classic Home Alone franchise. With the first movie over 30 years old and the fifth installment just arriving on Disney's streaming service, we're going to take a look at all five films in the series and see how well they fit together. What the? Okay, I guess it. I guess it seems as if I'm not alone in the dark void today, as three nerds appear to have popped into existence beside me. Josh. You're the only one who could help us. Hey, it's Josh from the Movie Timelines YouTube channel. We're trapped, hopping between family favorite Christmas movies. Use your magic timelines, Voodoo, and get us home! Guys, it doesn't work like that. I can't just pop you into the year from a movie, not without drawing upon some really dark forces from within the void. It might, it might take some time. You just take as long as you need. We just need to find a way to kill some time. I ideally, somewhere we can sit down, though. Yeah, you seem to have the only seat in the void. What can I say? This job has its perks, but I, I, I think I have somewhere that you guys can wait. Uh, head through that door. It'll take you to the complex. Sounds ominous, but I can't think of anything better. I probably uh, should have told them about the quantum anomalies. Hmm. Eh, well, whatever. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't force them to go. Well, this is cozy. Yeah, a nice little apartment to hang out in while we wait for Josh to get the timelines in order. I think we know what to do. Christmas pod? Christmas, Christmas pod. pod.
Hey nerds, are you ready? I worked out the Home Alone timeline. Hey, that's good. And it didn't take too long either. If we hurry, we can probably squeeze in one movie before bedtime. No. No more movies. I'm not going through all this again. I don't know what it is about you weirzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
My knees, my poor creaky knees, no! Hey, look! It's just 10 midnight. That means it's Christmas Day. So it is! Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas to you two. I hope you both got me Lego.